here we have Steph and Jess. Steph? Steph, I'm Steph. Jess? Uh, it, it became obvious to me very quickly in meeting with these guys that a normal trying to like work on a script together and have it delivered was just not going to happen and you guys are all going to see how that works in you just, just a second. You believe in our public speaking abilities, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> They're very enthusiastic. Um, just by, by way of a little introduction, if, if I go back to where I started this morning and talking about this, this concept of trying to make something go viral, very few of us have done it, but everybody's probably had that feeling where you kind of post something, a comment or a, or a photo that you feel is especially witty or smart and you, you hit send and, and almost like within three or four seconds you get your first like. And then kind of a few minutes later you're getting your Facebook or your, your Instagram notifications and it's maybe picked up a dozen or 20 or 30 and then you find yourself sort of checking back every 15 minutes just to kind of check in on how your post's going. And, it's, it's a pretty nice feeling when you, when you manage to rack up a few likes like that. So in preparation for this morning, I actually went back to my own illustrious social media history. And um, <clears throat> I trawled through all of my Facebook and all of my Instagram and all of my often neglected Twitter. And I tried to find my social media peak. I tried to find my maximum clout score. And I found one post, and this I think was way more impressive at the time. I did find one post on my Facebook account, which got 228 likes and 92 comments. Mm, decent. It's all right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, but to do, I had, I, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first ever photo of my son Moses, who's now, now two, um, and it looks less squashed than that. Um, <laughs> So for my 228 likes and 92 comments, um, my wife and I, mainly my wife, who's are you here somewhere? Yeah. Yes, I love you. <laughs> we, we made a human. <laughs> we made a whole human and we got 228 likes and 92 comments for that, <laughs> which I thought was pretty good. That's a really quiet Tuesday morning for these girls <laughs> that I've got sitting next yeah, to me. that's <laughs> depressing. <laughs> um, these guys uh, have a, I guess, an, an Instagram account and a blog called How To Live. And these guys are two of, I was going to say Australia, but I'm going to say two of the world's best known and most revered fashion bloggers, celebrities, whatever. I feel very old describing what these guys do. <laughs> but it's awesome. Uh, these guys have well over 100,000 Instagram fans. Uh, they've got brands throwing themselves at them. They've got adoring fans stopping them in the streets. And I have met nobody who is able to demonstrate excellence in the field of awesomeness quite like these two girls. Okay. So what we're going to do today um, is we're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to find out what they've been doing and how it all works. And they're going to give us a pretty open and honest account of, of how it all works. Of the journey. Of the journey. So, let's go, let's go all the way back. Um, what do we got here, guys? So, basically, this is just to give you a bit of an insight into our lives. And, Everyone and to demonstrate straight off the bat we're not twins, because obviously everybody thinks that. Yeah, it's kind of our thing, but we're actually five years apart. Steph is my older sister. And this is just us holidaying in Phuket. We thought we'd break the ice with a really cute baby photo. And as you can see... Jess was already pulling off the pout. I still had some way to go. Mm. I think I was just grumpy that day, but... <laughs> I think that look is meant to go with those sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you guys, obviously sisters, you grew up together. Was, was fashion kind of like a, a big thing from the childhood or it just came aboard later? I mean, we always liked shopping, but I think every little girl likes to, you know, go crazy in a store or a toy store or anything. Yeah, but and I think our dad actually said to us the other day, oh, I never actually thought you guys would get into fashion, so... I'm guessing it wasn't in our blood. It's bored it here now, hey? Because yeah. we fast forward a little bit, or a lot. Here we are, June 2012. Yes. What do we got? So this is our, actually our first blog photo. It was taken on an iPhone by Stephanie's boyfriend, who isn't a fantastic photographer. As you can tell. But so our blog concept kind of came about when I was moving to Paris for six months to go and study French. Um, and we just kind of thought it would be a really cute idea, a way of keeping in contact sharing our you know wardrobe our purchases our lives whatever we were up to yeah we didn't know about much about blogging at the time and everyone kind of said to us wow this is such a unique concept and that's why it kind of took off for us but in reality we just had absolutely no idea what we were doing we hadn't done much research we just kind of started it on blogspot real quick and then just started taking phone photos on our iphones and this photo you know it looks like oh, it was a quick snap it took us like half an hour we almost missed the plane because like we still have like 300 photos we took and as you can see, it's not that good. But um, this was where it all began. 
So I think what everybody's wondering, you guys were actually just wearing this stuff. Yes, yeah. this is how we used to dress before we had to bump it up a little Ooh, for the nicer. photos. <laughs> Yes, very conservative with the fur jackets and the... the, the <laughs> faux fur, faux fur. <laughs> Occasionally I have fears that I'm going to turn up matching to the other presenters. Uh, that was pretty all right for today, I think. <laughs> okay, so, what, so you guys start this blog. Yeah. Yes, so for we each started other. this blog um, and it got like a little bit of traction, you know, a few comments, like maybe 100 or 200 views a day. Yeah, and I think initially it was a bit of word of mouth and also we started a Facebook page and, you know, just kind of invited our friends and slowly we were seeing kind of, you know, a few more Little likes every day. Little nothing too huge. Um, so Steph went off to Paris and then... With that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is us at Paris Fashion Week. So a few months into the trip, I had to come home for a wedding and we decided to go back together for Fashion Week and we thought, okay, we need some clothes, you know, we're gonna be going to shows every day. So we started approaching designers and PR companies and things like that. But at the time we only had like 200 followers or something. So we knew that wouldn't be good enough to get their attention. So we faked our followers. Yeah, we, were, we got into Photoshop and we like changed some numbers around and whatever and we approached. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, just for your ears. Um, and we approached a bunch of designers and that wasn't even enough. So we got a whole bunch of no's. Um, it was the day before we were leaving and we got one email from a PR company in Sydney being like, yeah, cool, if you can get to Sydney, we've got a bunch of labels who want to dress you. So we quickly changed our flights and the next day we were in Sydney. And we went to these PR companies too, actually ended up saying yes. And it was literally all of our favorite designers. And they were like, yeah, you can take anything you want. And because we had to make outfits for each day and we knew it would be a little bit difficult, all the collections were kind of together. So we would just pick out outfits that we saw that matched each other as you can see here we're kind of you know color coded somewhat matching yeah so we went back to Paris um, we emailed everybody all the designers um, trying to get invited to shows and I think one person said yes so every day we would just rock up to the shows in our get up take some photos get snapped and Prance then leave. around yeah we thought no one was noticing we were being very subtle until this day when we actually got approached to be on video for an interview and we we're like yeah sure cool and mid-interview the woman goes to us oh so are you embarrassed that you just come here and you're more dressed up than everyone at the fashion week and then you're just like prancing around and leaving and we're like oh <laughs> we <laughs> didn't think noticed. anyone noticed but so i mean like we were throwing these outfits together and people we're thinking, whoa, like, look at them. They're so edgy, like. That's a pillowcase, just FYI, from our Paris apartment because the, we didn't the, the have handbag. a bag that day. The pillowcase. <laughs> and the sunnies were from a costume store and the bracelets are scrunchies we picked up at American Apparel. Like, we were just throwing these things together. And as we were leaving this show, show kind of deflated after that horrible interview, um, this girl grabbed us and she was like, hey, you guys look so cool. Can I take an Instagram of you? And we were like, yeah, yeah, sure. And she was like, I'm actually the fashion editor of Grazie UK. Um, so she ended up contacting us um, to do an article. Um, it ended up a three page spread in Grazie UK about how we're at the forefront of the matchy matchy twinning trend. Twinning. She was like <laughs> comparing us to the Olsen twins and all of these amazing people that we kind of look up to. And we were like, yeah, 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 the twinning trend. That's what we we're going for. But. <laughs> yeah, so it ended up getting printed all over the world. It was printed in Australia and the UK and a bunch of other amazing places. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and then all of a sudden our blog stats just skyrocketed. And then every brand wanted to work with us. We were getting emails constantly. And it was just all from this one day when we happened to stumble upon this girl. Right, so just for those playing along at home. So we're going to the fashion shows, we're dressing up, but we don't actually have tickets, so we're just no. leaving. No tickets. We, <laughs> we get interviewed <laughs> by some random chick on the street who ends up being Grazia Magazine. A story gets picked up, blows out across the world and all of a sudden people are getting in touch with you. So surely the, the commercial deals start coming, so I've got a little, oh, yeah. a little shot here. They start rolling in. So this is, this is where the big bucks start happening, right? Uh-huh, yes. So, so what this we got? is our first campaign that we did. And um, we made $250. $250, is that each? No, no, we come as a package. $125 yeah. each? Big and one. What did, you, what did you have to do for it? So this company actually contacted us and we were so super excited and we didn't even at the time think about getting paid. We were just like, oh my God, I can't believe they want us. I can't believe they know who we are. 
So we flew to Sydney for the campaign. And as you can see, we took some cute shots together. We styled it, we did a full day shoot. And obviously on the table was $250 and $250 worth of contra, as they call it in the biz, which is clothes that you don't want, basically. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Um, and actually they're still using the tags, which is two years later, so. They're still using this image on. That was a learning curve. Yeah. So, so, so they paid you guys 250 there. bucks plus 250 bucks worth of contra. Yes. They took your photos, they put it on on like a whole range or a whole collection. Yeah, so that was like, we had full page mag uh, ads in Famous Magazine. There were interviews. We did an appearance in Maya for it. Yeah, our friends were going into Maya to go shopping and they were like seeing these huge signs of us and they were like, I am models. And we're like, okay. <laughs> So you made a big time. And you guys also mentioned something really interesting to me about um, the actual wording that they used for this. Yes. With the little X there. So it was how to live X paint a red or the other way around. And basically what that kind of tells people is that it was a design collaboration. That's what everybody assumes. And so people still today, my friend sold a piece the other day in her store and she was like, oh, I saw I sold your design. And I was like, no, I had nothing to do with it. I just modeled for them for a day. So that was yeah a bit strange for us. <laughs> Um, but then, I mean, from there, we went on to work with some pretty incredible brands and actually get paid a little more than $250 in some clothes. And, um, I mean, we've worked with Windsor Smith. We did a shoe collaboration. She's I'm actually wearing, wearing them. Some. You can't okay, are, them. are they still available if people want to? No, want, they no. aren't. I think they're a collector's item now. A collector's on eBay, eBay maybe, perhaps. Maybe. All right, look out. Um, we've worked with Mimco. We've worked with Nasty Gal and Michael Kors in the U.S., um, yeah, we do some cool stuff now. And, and you guys have gotten a little bit less green as far as how we go about negotiating these contracts and stuff? Yes, so now we, we have a manager. Hey. It's very legit yeah. and luckily my boyfriend's a lawyer, so like the contracts are good now. The same, <laughs> this might be the same boyfriend that was the bad photographer? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Well, bad at taking right. photos, good at drawing up contracts. That's, we'll keep him around. That's good, probably better than the other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at this point, you guys are like on posters in Maya and, and it must be cool that your friends are seeing you and stuff out there. Yeah. yeah. So but I've, like, what about people, you, like, we, we, did you get stopped in the street? Like you had little yeah, girls running I after you? I actually was on my own um, at a cafe in Sydney and had a girl come up to me and she was like, Steph? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, hi. And I was like, ah, oh, like, do we know each other? And she was like, I follow your blog. And I was like, oh my God. And she was like, can I have a photo with you? And I was like, can I have a photo with you? <laughs> so we have a photo on Instagram. I don't think we managed to find it. But yeah, no, we couldn't track it down. But yes, so down. now we get approached by people on the street, which is fun. And our followers, are, our followers are always the best dressed, which we love. So we can always pick them out from a crowd. So what are, what are the hotspots for your fans? Where do you know you're going to go out and you've got to... Oh, Yochi. Uh, Yochi. Really? Yochi on Carlisle Street. They're all yes. there. Young you can't go there anymore. The Not in your tracksuit. <laughs> fashion hotspot. <laughs> okay, so next up, I mean, we're talking about these commercial deals you guys were doing. What do, what do we got here? Yeah, so Westfield is Southland. Um, we've been working with them and we recently did a nail art workshop with them. And when we, like, when we work with brands, we really like to do ongoing work with them. You know, there's no point in doing a one-off Instagram post. They don't really <coughs> receive anything. It looks kind of fake from our end and nobody wins. So it was cool to do it with Westfield because they really understood that concept. So we work with them over all of our channels, over a longer period of time. We did know. an Instagram takeover. We, I think we're an article for their newsletter. And then we did this nail art workshop and we're still working with them. Um, and yeah, they were definitely one of the best companies we've worked with. So when, when, did, this, when did this go down? I'm just trying to- So this time. was October, October last year. Okay. So this was quite recently. Cool. So at the time that, you know, you guys got interesting for Westfield, what are we talking about, you know, fans or readership or, you know, if we, we had to throw some, some numbers out there? At this point, I think yeah. we were on um, 100 close to 100,000 yeah. Instagram followers. Something like that. Um, oh. Blog stats all right. fail me. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so getting close to 100,000, that must have been pretty cool. Yeah. Do, yeah. You guys, do you guys remember where you were when you kind of saw it? Oh, of course. Tick we over. Do. Tick yeah, we actually have a video. Yeah, we, we have a video. Can we, can it would really have been embarrassing. It? Can we, no? Can you just we describe it? It, it was, it was just, just like a like, lot of woos. Yeah, it was a lot woos. of like arms in the air. We were actually at Sydney Fashion Week last year. Um, so that was a big moment for us. And was it like actually as awesome as you thought it was going to be? Or was it kind of like New Year's well, Eve? Where it's like I three, two, one. Uh, well, four. just before we were about to, we were like watching and we knew it was going to happen. We were sitting next to this girl at Fashion Week. 
and she she goes, oh, cute, you have 100,000 followers. And we're like, uh, what? We didn't realize it ticked over. And she was sitting there with her 400,000 followers. And we're like, And she yeah. was that girl that did the eyebrow dance, you know, dun, 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 dun. Sure. Do you guys remember that? Viral, mm. very big. She obviously got a lot of followers. Cool. 300,000 to go for you guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, there's, there's a lot of what the photos, <laughs> if I went through the feed, this one I loved, can, can, you, can you tell us what is going on here? So this is us at Japan Fashion Week last year in October. We actually thought that Japan would be absolutely crazy, you know, the fashion would be like nowhere else. So we rocked we up We were worried like about this. blending in. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we did the opposite. And turns out people in Japan are like, quite conservative in the way they dress. So, you know, as you can see, we kind of like stuck out a little bit amongst little. the fashion crowd. But then we found our people and now we're actually heading back to Japan for Fashion Week in a couple of weeks. And we've been doing some work with um, L Girl Japan over there, so that's cool. And so we kind of like to mix things up. You know, we've got our daily vlog photos and all that. But so this was actually something we came up with called the Together Project, um, where we decided that everywhere we traveled to, we would team up with a thoughtful designer, so like ethical or sustainable. I think these were made by the designer's mums, they told us. Yeah, they were, Disney. The, the, the dress. The get up, yep. yeah. <laughs> Dresses, yeah. Cool. Um, and we thought we'd team up with a designer and an Instagram photographer and a cool spot and take a photo. And as you can imagine, that's kind of complicated. Um, this, this one turned out very well though. It was actually in Shibu Crossing, so it was very cool. It was like when the lights went green, we quickly ran in, took some photos and then... Yeah, but this was actually, the Together Project was something that has totally failed for us, um, which is interesting because, you know, Instagram wasn't ever something we set out to have a lot of followers on. And, you know, the second you try really hard and you're like, okay, this is going to be awesome and we've thought up this amazing concept, totally failed. I think we get seven likes on these photos on Tumblr and... <laughs> Maybe you need more of this kind of Japanese Jiminy Cricket guy that's just, just on the side. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind for our next trip. Yeah, yeah. So um, fashion shows is still a regular thing you guys yes. get to? So we've been to some amazing fashion weeks. We were in Japan, as I said, last year. And we were in New York, I think, the year before that. Yeah, we um, have a funny story from New York. We actually, we got invited to a bunch of shows in New York this time. Yay. Um, but we did we, it. You got, they sent you tickets? Like actual tickets, cool. yes. Um, but so we actually had an extra outfit that we didn't have a show to go to. So we we're like, oh, it was our last day in New York. We really wanted to go. What can we do? Let's counterfeit some tickets. So we had our old tickets. This, this, is, this is a recurring theme through this presentation. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let's fake really it till we make it here, you know. Is that your real hair? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. <Yes. laughs> Um, so we had tickets um, that were online from previous shows that we had gone to. So we kind of just did a quick Google, found out what shows were on that day, got on the Photoshop, fixed Changed the tickets. It. But we weren't actually trying to go to the show. We just wanted to be able to get into the building where Fashion Week was. You know, we're not, we're not like total crazies. Exactly. So we walk Fly. in, they let us in with the fake tickets and then we're like, sweet, now we're in the building. Let's go to a show. <laughs> so we ended up. Wow. Going to the concierge and they were like, oh, I can't find it. And we were like, yeah, 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 yeah. And we've got tickets. We've got tickets. These are our tickets. And they were like, mm, okay, whatever. Just go on through. Gave us seats. We accidentally snuck backstage at one point just because we went the wrong way. We're... Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Accidentally. Yeah. It was a good result. Yeah. I imagine concierges are much more accommodating when you're two beautiful young girls. I don't think I would have got in. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like who dressed up that much to actually not go to the show? So, like, clearly we're invited. Yeah, must be. Um, all right. So let's let's talk about some of the things that are going kind of wild for you guys. What do we, what do we got here? Talk us through it. So these are our three most like photos on Instagram, and Instagram's a bit funny for us because sometimes we'll try really hard to make a perfect photo, and we'll think it's amazing, and we'll post it, and it'll get a thousand likes and it'll just fall completely flat. And these like, did you say you'll get a thousand, thousand likes? Flat, yeah. So that's so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Only a thousand. Um, but so these three photos are photos we literally like two second photos, you know, a lolly cup at the movies type thing. That's somebody's cute little puppy. Yeah. And these are our three most liked photos. So I don't know. That's pretty funny. Is there any story behind the one on the left? Um, Who, that was in Mexico. Yep. The boyfriend took that one yeah, again. Yeah, that's what I thought. So you got to give him some credit. Now. He's like, he's one out of three here. Yeah. There were like 300 photos before this. I'd just okay. like you all to know. 
Um, yeah, but I mean, that was something that I literally took in Mexico, got on a plane to meet Jess in LA, got there, and she was like, oh my God, have you seen the photo? It went off, and I was like, what photo? Like, I, you know, <laughs> what is that? These three photos are literally things we just snapped in the moment, and you can't like plan pretty well. Stuff. So if you guys can't work it out, none of us really have a chance. Yeah, well, I mean, for us, we've realized that we went through a period where we had a bit of a lull and we tried really hard to kind of make these stylized photos. We had photo shoots, you know, we dressed up and you could tell that they were staged. They were excellent quality photos. They looked amazing, but nobody liked them and we didn't know why. And then the feedback we actually got from our friends is that, you know, it looks fake. We just kind of want to see what you're doing in your everyday. So we've really taken that into account now and we kind of try to incorporate that a little bit more. Cool. So by this point, sort of the, the steam train's definitely running and things are going pretty well. And then you guys wake up in the morning and we have this. What's, the BuzzFeed what was this? article. Yeah, you guys got on BuzzFeed, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for those of us who don't know what BuzzFeed is, maybe you can just loop us in on that. So BuzzFeed is the place for things to go viral, basically. They write articles with little substance compared to, you know, your actual news sites, but they're basically mainly images. It's quick things like, you know, three ingredient recipes and, you know, things about celebrities and somebody wrote this article and it was just basically all of our Instagram pictures and it was, you want their lives, you know, these. It was all about how amazing our lives are and our nails and our what was it phone cases everything basically about us and we ended up completely blowing up i remember this happened one night and then the next morning we woke up with a million emails from all over the world you know production companies in la TV wanting to network. work with us and designers from paris and just the most amazing opportunities came from this one article literally overnight and still now this was a year ago and still now we'll get things particularly uh, um, American networks and producers wanting to do a TV show with us and it's always oh we saw the BuzzFeed article you guys so, look like fun so how like how do you get on BuzzFeed do you just I call them know. up we have no idea so you don't even know how you got on there you just well, got we on actually there. looked recently and it turns out this isn't BuzzFeed staff I think anybody can submit a BuzzFeed article and some girl was a fan put all our Instagram photos together and bang there was an article so, so a fan actually kind of did this yeah we think so yeah that's pretty amazing. Pretty cool. So in trying to keep it fresh, you guys have talked about a couple of other initiatives you sort of tried to look at. Yes. Um, we've got a shot here from what's on your wish list. Do you want to talk us through this one real quick? Sure. Yeah. So we're always looking at new ways to interact with our followers. Um, and Wishlist Wednesday is something we started, how long ago? Six months ago now, maybe? Yeah, it was actually inspired by Gary Vinerchuk. I think that's how you say his last name. I don't know. Gary V, um, who's a New York-based really famous marketer and he has a million Twitter followers. And once a week he says to his followers, what do you want? And people write anything like, you know, one guy wrote, oh, I want a cheeseburger and the next morning there was a cheeseburger on his doorstep. And you know, the idea behind it is that you're kind of building morale with your followers. You're giving them something and asking for nothing um, because you know, there comes time when you need to ask them for something and you want to kind of have that relationship with them. So this was our kind of version of that, which is Wishlist Wednesday where we say to our followers, what's on your wish list? And they can literally write anything. They write a bag. Some people ask for holidays. They ask for peace, love and happiness. We did one time, which was like a candle, a smiley Facebook and something else. Yeah, so we just occasionally will declare it Wishlist Wednesday. Um, I think last time we did it, we got about 700 comments on a photo compared with the standard is about 50. Um, so, you know, the second you offer people something, they're like, yeah, I'm in, like, I'm here now. Like, and, and you guys just randomly pick some people exactly. who yeah. wishes to make come true? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, we pick a few. We'll send them. And we've sent to people in Russia, in Canada, you know, around Australia, and we'll just send them whatever they want. What if they just want Contra clothing? You guys still got <laughs> plenty yeah, of Yeah, one time you? actually somebody asked for a pair of sunnies, and we are like, oh, we have those sunnies. You can have them. Awesome. Um, when's the next one of them happening so people can get on board? Um, Secret? Check on Wednesdays. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it seems like things just keep getting bigger and bigger, right? So we've got this blog and then we're getting Grazia, Instagram's blowing up, commercial deals coming in, we end up on BuzzFeed and then you guys send me this photo, which is like, what, two weeks ago? Uh, yes. Weeks ago? So yeah. this is from our trip most recently when we were in LA. 
meeting with different production companies and networks, as you can see here. We're yeah, on. we were in the car park at E and we found all the E trucks and we were so excited. <laughs> so hang on, what, what are you guys doing over there? Like what, how did that happen? You, can we, can we talk about it? No, we well yeah, it? so we're meeting with networks and production companies. I mean, um, you know, the US is a huge place and it's just kind of about getting yourself out there and talking about opportunities and seeing where they think you'll fit in. We've talked about doing red carpet coverage or competing on like a competition type show, but I mean, we'll see what comes of it. So that's pretty good. Cool. So we're talking like less than three years since that first photo. At yes. Melbourne Airport, yeah, two and, and a half years. you guys are going and talking with E about being on reality TV shows and all sorts of crazy stuff. That's that's awesome. Have you guys got any ad advice for any budding or aspiring Instagrammers sitting in the audience today? Um, sure. I mean, <laughs> you take this one. I mean, one of one thing we didn't mention was a way we really grew our Instagram was by collaborating with brands, and obviously at the beginning you're doing things for no money. Um, but it's, you know, what else you can get out of it, like brand building and follower building. So we would work with brands and they would tag us into things or we'd be wearing brands and we'd just tag them into the, our posts. They would repost it and our following would grow that way. And I think that's the most common way, um, you know, blo fashion bloggers or food bloggers or anyone grows on Instagram is kind of like by sharing. Yeah, even brands and, you know, gifting. Like the other day I bought Steph a beach towel for her birthday, just like a round beach towel that I found on the internet. I thought it was cool. And then I checked on Instagram and they had like 160,000 followers and it was because they'd been gifting all of these people, all these influencers, and then, you know, they just skyrocket and everybody wants one. So and you gotta be generous to get yeah. stuff yes, back, eh? Yes, definitely. Well, and I think the other thing is about building a genuine relationship. Like we also work with our girls. We kind of tried to think what would our charity be if we had one ideal charity and we couldn't come up with one and we thought, our thing is that we want to encourage girls to give rather than, you know, picking one charity, you know, you teach them how to give and how to think beyond themselves, whether it's just like, you know, giving up their clothes, um, you know, giving them to a, the local Red Cross or anything. So, you know, our kind of our relationship with our followers goes well beyond just like the occasional Instagram post. Awesome. Um, I reckon we've got time for maybe one or two questions. Does anybody here want to want to ask the girls something? Big opportunity. <laughs> we got one question up the back. So the question was, is this is this your gig now? Is this kind of what you do? What point? Yeah. Um, it was probably about a year and a half to two years into it, I think, that this so, became our full time. Yeah, Jess was working as a stylist before, and I was working as an event manager. Um, but at the moment, I mean, yeah, the blog is taking up a lot of our time. We're working on our own shoe line as well. Um, so we're kind of like been going back and forth with China um, and we're releasing our own line in a few months. But yeah, this has kind of brought about so many opportunities that we're lucky enough for this to be our full time. Awesome. One more? Cool. So the question was, how do you guys set out, uh, how do you go about being different to what other people locally and internationally are doing? Um, I think the biggest thing for us was that we didn't actually know what was out there initially. Um, so that really gave us a strong advantage. But advice we always give to bloggers is kind of, you know, put your own spin on it. So, you know, there are so many blogs out there and there are so many people trying to stand out. And, you know, if you want to focus on something like fashion news, which is like every second blog out there, then you've got to put your own individual spin on it. Otherwise, no one's going to be looking at yours compared to everybody else's. Like you guys had sisters, right? How one yeah. lives probably wouldn't have worked. <laughs> well, awesome. I mean, we've also got the crazy, crazy thing stressing. going on. That helps, I yeah. would imagine. Uh, please put your hands together to thank Jess and Steph from How To Live.